as well as there's awareness developing, I think culturally, that um, whole balanced health is not simply about making our bodies smaller. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Alex Timmons. I'm one of the new owners to Mountain Trek. I was lucky enough to join the team back in 2018. I uh, am very much more of a guest than I am uh, the health guru practitioner, uh, which you'll meet tonight, Kirk and Katya. I come from San Francisco tech world. I come from working long hours, lots of coffee, burning yourself out, working hard, 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 competing, competing, competing until the bubble pops. And I found myself in the hospital and had eight nights there to contemplate life and was lucky enough that at the same time, I was offered the opportunity to come and work with Mountain Trek. And my wife and I went and did the retreat and realized that I didn't need to push, 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 push so hard to find happiness, to find success and health and feel very lucky that I had the opportunity to pull back and take a different trajectory with life and um, help mountain track and help more guests like yourselves find mountain track and come and join. So I come from more of the guest perspective. So I like to kind of um, be the host of these events as a middleman between you all who are either thinking about returning or joining to mountain trek for the first time. Um, and then introducing you to our program creator and director Kirkland Shave, as well as our new general manager, Katya Campbell. Um, so I'll let them introduce themselves in a second, just quick housekeeping. So uh, tonight is a Q&A with Kirk and Katya. They are currently running the program. I think Katya will have to leave at 545 to go teach one of our health talks. Um, but we were able to find some time where we could pull both of them out of the program and pick their brains a little bit. So I'll ask a few questions that are a little higher and overarching. And then if you have any questions you want to ask of Kirk and Katya, please put it in the, the comments and I'll record them and, and try to get them all answered. Um, and feel free to speak up, open forum. We're not a huge group tonight. We've got about 25 people here. Um, so uh, yeah, if you have any burning questions, please put them in the chat. And without further ado, please meet if you haven't already our program creator and program director, Kirkland Shave. Hi, everybody. Nice to see some familiar faces and uh, familiar names in black boxes and some new folks there. Um, yes, thanks, Alex. Um, I've been working with Mountain Trek for over 20 years, as has Katja. We both have different roles in the business. And I was in, on a team of three that started this program back in 2000, and we've been morphing it over the last 20 plus years. Super exciting time of growth in terms of health understanding these last 20 years. When we started the program, we didn't have a clue about gut biome or epigenetics or hormonal balance or so many different things. We didn't even have functional MRI. We didn't even know anything about sleep hygiene really back then. So. These last 20 years have been just a complete rocket ride of new information that's come out with a ton of research that has helped us really build a very powerful holistic reset. We call it balanced health. And um, Katya and I are the key deliverers of this program. Katya, I'll introduce, has been our yoga instructor for over 20 five years, I think, at Mountain Trek mm -hmm. and left Mountain Trek to go into the fitness world more deeply in another direction. And I wooed her back um, to join the team at Mountain Trek. And now she's taking fully over the whole fitness director's role and uh, really upgraded our whole fitness program and rebalanced it, as well as she's our new general manager for the whole team, our 48 odd staff. You want to say anything? <laughs> Thanks, Kirk. Um, and really nice to see everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. This is my first uh, Q&A with everybody. And as Kirk said, we're kind of in the, or Alex said, we're in the middle of the season. Um, and we really, I, I would love to see some of these familiar faces and new faces up here in Canada and come and, and hike with us. So it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Thank you, Kirk and Katya. 
Um, so one thing I've really noticed in my short tenure at Mountain Trek is that the program is a living thing. Even from 2018, when I first experienced it till last season, when I experienced it, I do try to go every week or every year for one week as a guest. Um, it changes. So I think the overlying topic of tonight is to share how Mountain Trek continues to be the world's best health reset program and how we continue to evolve. So could, could you guys please share a little bit about what's new over the last couple seasons that is um, in response to some modern stressors? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll start with yeah. that. Um, one of the things that happened over COVID is we actually had to physically close for two years. And that, that caused us to pivot and shift. And Alex and I started doing programs corporately on Zoom. And we even held some um, Zoom-based weekend retreats for our program for many of our alumni to attend. But one of the things we learned is that everybody's awareness of mental and emotional well-being went up because of COVID. The understanding that anxiety and depression are very common for all of us as a society and that uh, trauma informed ways of working with that is really the new cutting edge for holistic health. And so we initiated when we first opened after COVID a forest bathing program into our regular hiking based program. And the, for, the surprise that both Katya and I got from the guests after they went through the two and a half hour forest bathing um, session with our forest bathing guide, Natasha, was that our guests, hands down, all the alumni said, I've never smelt a thing when I've hiked here before the last five years I've come here, or I've never seen a bird, or I've never noticed the breeze on my skin. I was totally disconnected from my senses, just trying to fitness truck as fast as I could so I could burn as much fat as possible. And we realized that we were pushing people too hard, partially because our demographic is aging, but also our demographic has been that many more years now sedentary. Our fitness levels overall have been declining over the last 10 to 15 years. And we realized that that sense of striving on the trail was keeping everybody's cortisol levels up and they weren't able to immerse into nature and have their hormones get balanced properly. So we experimented this year by taking the edge out of fitness trekking and having everybody work somewhere between 6.5 and 8.5 out of 10 in terms of their maximum of exertion so that they could shed stored calories. And we drop, brought, brought it down to what we now call flow hiking, so that it's not stopping to take photos every five minutes or getting into big conversations on the trail, but we're just moving continuously at more of what would you say, a seven out of 10 on yeah. average? Yeah, I'd say a six to a seven, yeah. And it was conscious knowledge on the fitness side that helped us take the risk to down-tempo the hiking. And then she'll talk more about which, how that's being picked up in the evening. But what we've noticed so far this year is that because everybody is lowering cortisol more now through the activity, that the body composition changes have actually improved. So that's a startling positive that we got out of initiating this, this experiment. And like you said, Alex, we're constantly taking in research and then we're experimenting and adjusting, taking in guest comments and adjusting the program so that it can be first and foremost hormonally balanced because that's what runs all of our systems so that we can then help everybody raise their metabolism in the most helpful way. And I know we've gone through lots of evolutions with our brand. And I know on the marketing side at one point, we were presenting ourselves as uh, purely a weight loss retreat. And I hear you say body composition. Could you talk a little bit about um, how we attain the results in body composition without solely being focused on weight loss. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there has been a cultural shift. And as Kirk referred to earlier, there's also a shift in our demographic. I mean, we've been around for so long that people that came to us 
20 years ago were in their 40s are now in their 60s and 30s or you know so we're seeing our demographic is getting um, a little bit older as well as there's awareness developing I think culturally that um, whole balanced health is not simply about making our bodies smaller that it's also fundamentally about how can we be the most vital that includes being strong being able to do simple things like get down onto the floor and get back up um, you know carry our grandchildren or pick up groceries so being functionally strong not just being small and so when we talk about body composition changes um, we're talking less about just losing weight and we're talking more about shifting our composition so we're decreasing our body fat because we do know that as our body fat gets into higher percentages that presents risk factors um, as well as more importantly increasing our lean muscle mass and focusing on the preservation of that as we get older we know that we all lose muscle mass at a rate of about three to eight percent per decade after the age of 30 particularly if you're not doing things like eating out of adequate amounts of protein and doing resistance strength training um so by looking at that science behind that, we go, okay, well, what can we do to help support this? And, and really, if we're in just total fat loss and that's or total weight loss, what ends up happening is we see this decline in both muscle and fat, and we don't see a strength component building. And that really isn't balanced health, nor is it the goal, particularly as you're aging. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we started to shift this and went, we, we went, well, how can we support this within our program so that we're, yes, we provide, of course, we're, you know, we, we still, there's still weight loss. There's still fat loss involved in the program, but can we all, can we do that at the same time of maintaining and building this and send people home with a formula that they feel empowered to now take that back with them? Um, and I think that's a big key difference that we've shifted out of sort of just weight loss and moved more into this body composition adaptation component. So we're so we talk a little bit about the classes, because for those of you that have been with us before, you know that we've always had our evening classes directed by guides because we couldn't get fitness truck or fitness trainers to come all the way out here, but Katya was able to woo a couple of high-end kinesiologists and fitness trainer staff to take over our evening workout classes. So now we have people that can really focus on form, cueing, and getting the most out of strength training three nights of the week so that we can work on that body composition. Yeah, because that was something that we were doing before, which we were just sort of doing sort of high intensity interval trainer cardio training almost five nights a week before the little bit of strength but the focus really wasn't on that so when we started to look at the program and this past year especially and say okay well can we bring this stress level down we know that we can get results if we start to shift dietary make major dietary changes that for most people that come here you know just eliminating the things like alcohol um, caffeine sugar dairy all of those kind of, we're going to see some decrease in inflammation so then what else can we do to help support the whole body system and um, and with in line with kind of dropping the intensity and the volume on hiking, we shifted our classes so that now we actually have three dedicated strength focused and only resistant training classes, as well as several others on the two other days where we're doing cardio kind of high intensity interval training. So as whereas before it was five days a week um, and it was an experiment, you know, we were trying to see, well, if we if we start to incorporate this, which we know is is ultimately about supporting health, are we going to see these same results? Um, and what's amazing about it, um, kind of mind blowing, actually, is that I'm, we're seeing results that are better than ever. Not only are we seeing every emotional health, sleep, hygiene, all of these things that we take um, we measures up at the beginning, at the end of the week, but we, we're seeing these big jumps in um, body composition, which is, which is, you know, reaffirming that we know we're on the right track and that really that weight loss and fat loss is not simply about calories in, calories out, that there's a whole component of which cortisol is a really key piece and being in constant striving all day long really doesn't support that. So I think we're headed in the right direction. Absolutely. Yeah. The other, I, the other thing that's changed this year, you're probably going to ask us that Alex is that um, sleep has now become an epidemic or lack of sleep, I should say. So the, the recent research says 66% of North Americans 
are now getting less than seven to nine hours on a regular basis. And that we know anything less consistently than seven hours on a regular basis is leading to inflammation, um, immune dysfunction, and hormonal imbalance, appetite hormone imbalance, all kinds of measures leading all the way up to all the way up to higher levels or likelihood of dementia. So the research about sleep is blatant now that it's our battery recharger for brain and body, our hormonal recharger and rebalancer and our immune system functioning time period. And so guests are coming to us underslept and that's just been continually rising. So this year um, we decided to up that game. So we've, we've increased some bed sizes so that we've got more comfortable bedrooms. Katja did a makeover on a bunch of the bedrooms and made them more conducive for sleep. Um, we've got some alarm clocks that now work with circadian uh, rhythm so that instead of being woken by a knock in the morning by the guard, guide and jostled awake and cortisol spiked, we're now, <laughs> we're now having the room fill up with amber light over a five minute period and birds start to chirp and the whole place sounds a little bit like um, Alfred Hitchcock, the birds at six o'clock in the morning, but honestly, it's more like an atrium, I guess. Um, but it's made a big difference for people sleep. Everybody's really enjoying that gradual awakening com and coming drawn out of sleep in a natural way. And then thirdly, we've added to the restorative yoga classes that Pachas initiated last year by adding more parasympathetic nervous system invoking activities at eight o'clock at night. So now we have um, Noemi giving healing, healing sound bowls, Tibetan bowls classes. And she's a, a world-class opera singer from Hungary. So she mixes her voice in with these Tibetan bowls and everybody's lying on yoga mats and they drift into this beautiful parasympathetic state that's guided um, intentionally by her. And then we have Natasha, our force bathing guide, who's a world-renowned soloist violinist has played with the London Philharmonic and plays in Austria and all over the world. She works with her violin one night a week and invokes, again, a guided meditation sound relaxation session. So every night of the week, we've got something going on to help people get into that nervous system state that helps them drop into sleep and out of their striving mind or their their worrisome mind and get a deep full night's sleep. So that's super exciting. Yeah, it's it, I, the analogy of uh, kind of a DJ working on his soundboard where you're moving up the treble and down the bass. And it sounds like we're working towards more balance. We're kind of dialing back some of the things that were extreme. Can you maybe explain a little bit why that works? Why does being in balance uh, across more elements of your health have better results than just simply cutting calories and exercising a lot? Well, off the top, we're, we've now learned through science that everything is based on hormones. So if we're striving to reach, attain a goal, um, on any of the aspects of health. And we, we use a metaphor of a tree for balanced health where the four of the branches would be movement, like functional movement, like Katja mentioned, and nutrition, which are super important. And those tend to be the two places that everybody focuses on for health. But we include sleep, hygiene, and we include detoxification. We don't detoxify anybody here, but we help boost the eliminatory system so that the body can help cleanse itself normally. And we give instructions and tips so that people can go home and continue to load, download the toxin levels in their bodies and consequently the inflammation. And then the middle part of the tree, the trunk of the tree is the mental emotional part of it. And we've learned over the years that it's really our mental and emotional self leads the body. If we're under stress and we're just coping, that dictates the choices we make to do things or not to do things, to eat in certain ways or not exercise, or not take care of our overall well-being because we're just in a coping state. So we're really working on all of those aspects of health on the foundation of three things as well, which includes mindfulness and being in nature, which genetically we believe we're wired for, and then also having just a small group of support 
So a team of staff that creates support and a maximum of 15, 16 guests so that 15 perfect strangers can actually realize they all have human struggles and woes that they all need tweaking. There's nobody that has perfect health. All of us, Katya and I have a list of things we're constantly working on to tweak because like Katya mentioned, after the age of 30, not only do we start to lose muscle and bone, but we also start to lose hormones. So what we do to tweak all around our lifestyle helps to bring the hormones back into balance and overall allows us to get into balanced health. It'll never just work on calories in and calories out. Kirk and Katya, could you exemplify that by sharing or walking us through what a typical day looks like? Yeah. So the guests, uh, their circadian alarm clocks begin at five to six. Um, and so they make their way downstairs into the main uh, dining area where there's a ginger water tonic for them and a protein smoothie to begin that anabolic activation that we're wanting um, of getting our muscles beginning to grow. Then from there, they are shepherded out to yoga at approximately 625. We do a gentle Hatha yoga class that's really accessible to everybody. Um, and that's a release and mob mobility style yoga. So within that, within the week, we might do a little bit of foam rolling, some um, lacrosse ball rolling yoga. It's a, it's a beautiful blend to get our bodies ready for a day of, of, of hiking. That will be an hour. Then we come out and have breakfast and um, all of our food is beautiful and organic and local and, and um, all made in house. And then from there, we would usually have some sort of health lecture on the variety of those five branches that we talked about um, in the morning. And then we would normally head out on a hike. And our hike varies anywhere from two hours on a shorter day, but more typically three and a half or so hours in which we're going out onto the trail with four hiking guides, three to four hiking guides, and we're having um, our lunch out on the trail. And then we would come back. Sometimes we have another health lecture or if we went out early, um, depending on when that health lecture is, sometimes there's two, we'll have another health lecture and then dinner at 5.15. We also have snacks throughout the day as well in order to keep our blood sugar regulated throughout the day. Um, a beautiful dinner. And then from there at 6 p.m., we have a, a fitness class of some sort, whether that's a resistance training class or a cardio class. And then our massages begin at 7, 8, and 9 p.m. So when you sign up for Mountain Trek, you get three massages per week. So you're, you, we cycle those through. And then during that period of time, well, and I should say as well, we also have the option instead of the fitness class, you always have an option of just going for an after dinner stroll with our, with our hiking guide. Um, if, feeling, if you're feeling like it's too much, you're tired, but you still want to get the benefits of moving after we eat. From there, the massages happen. If you're not having a massage, people will go into the spa, do hot tubs, steam room, sauna, cold plunge. And then, um, and then there's a variety of other treatments, of course, that you can sign up for. So whether that's counseling sessions, whether that's um, a session with our nutritionist, um, uh, musical tuning, what, what? Bio, sound, bio, bio, sound, bio tuning. So a variety of options. And then our parasympathetic reset at 8 p.m. And then usually we go straight for shutting things down at 10 p.m. And lights are out and everyone's getting a solid sleep and we get our good eight hours of sleep and then we begin at 6 a.m. So that's a typical day. It's very full, as you can hear from Katja, almost boot camp-ish in terms of schedule. But what a lot of our guests like is that they don't have to think about anything. They don't have to make choices about anything. They can just come and be dropped into the schedule and be just gently ushered from event to event and come out the other end of the arc of the week transformed. And I don't know if any of you have seen the TripAdvisor comments on our website, but you'll see that the majority of the guests come through this program and it's more than just a fitness activity week. It's actually transformable. We see everyone walk out looking 10 years younger at the end of the week and with a little pep in their step and a smile on their face. And it's amazing. That's why we keep doing this. Mm -hmm. Do you find that we have a, a typical guest who is drawn to that type of schedule or is there um, a shift in our guests throughout the week where it 
there's a certain amount of time before they let go and let you take care of them. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. There is an arc to the week because at first everybody's coming in and a lot of things are pulled out of their life. A lot of the coping things like Netflix or Ben and Jerry's or a glass of wine and guacamole and chips at the end of the workday. A lot of things are pulled out. So there's a restabilizing effect that we kind of jokingly call the toxic beginning where there's a bit of withdrawal. And then there's a recalibration happening, both digestively and energetically. And then the hormones start to get balanced. And primarily, they're balanced by the circadian clock that we've set up in this optimal timing of day and week. And then when the hormones get more in balance, the energy start to rise. And then people start to move into that anabolic state that Katja just mentioned, that growth uh, state that we are all in in our college years starts to come back um, miraculously in like six days and so there's this sort of difficult first couple of days then a, a, a deep sleep and energy rising period midweek and then by the end of the week people are just like on a next level doesn't matter their age or what body shape they're in there's a transformation that happens biochemically for everybody I'll never forget, uh, well, every week that I attend, but the first week was especially unique because I had been in the hospital for eight nights, just a month and a half prior. And I had booked the time up in Mountain Trek before going into the hospital. And I, I was a little bit suspect of doing a hiking-based health retreat after having invasive lung surgery. But what I was amazed with is the, the combination of sleep and proper nutrition it accelerates your healing. Mm -hmm. And in the one week that I was at Mountain Trek, I healed more than an entire month and a half prior to that. And it, it, it felt like the nurturing environment with all the sleep that we were talking about, it, it really allowed my body to do what it was trying to do, which was heal in that moment. I think just taking a break from the regular life that most of our guests, including you, when you were doing that work, Alex, it's so intense and such long working hours and has so many responsibilities and requires an elevated level of cortisol just to function really is what people come home to. They come home to their body, their, their more peaceful state, the nature immersion of the whole week just really allows them to feel connected to the larger world and not just so alone with their struggles, as well as aligning with like-minded people who are all trying to reclaim themselves. And, and what I would add to that as well, and I think that um, I, I think is one of the one of our strong suits is our program is that because it's small, where we have a maximum of 16 guests and a really high staff to guest ratio. Um, we're able to really attend to multiple needs. And people are coming for all sorts of different reasons. You know, you may have someone that is extreme, has an extremely high level of fitness, but maybe they have just cared for their aging parents for the last two years who maybe just passed away and they're just recalibrating themselves. And although they're very, very fit, they're here really for an emotional reset and a stress reset. And they may just wanna hike very, very slowly. And then you may have somebody else who, maybe has lost their fitness and were, were, they were busy parenting or, or working and or combination and they haven't hit the gym in 10, 15 years. Um, and it's something that's totally new for them. And so our program really does allow for us to be able to nurture multiple needs and multiple guest needs. Um, and I think that's, um, I think that's, that's a really a strong benefit to the program and, um, and speaks to why we have such a high return rate of alumni, because we can meet people where, we're at, where they're at. Yeah. Speaking of, of returning, I've heard some of our guests or return guests say this is part of my routine. Um, some guests uh, come in hoping they come once. Can you talk a little bit about what you have built into the program that helps guests change their life back home? So it's not just one week that is so disparate from what they do at home, but can actually integrate back home. Can you speak a little bit about that? I think part of the reason why we can claim that we're the number one 
reset program in the world is that we're we're very practical. The schedule of the day is optimized, but all of the different things that we're doing through the day are things that people can do at home. We don't just feed everybody vegan because that would potentially help their weight loss. We we feed people an omnivoric diet, we'll adjust to vegetarian or vegan, but we believe that that becomes a teaching tool for people to learn, well, that that's a soup I could make or a, a breakfast I could make, and then they get recipes for it. And, and the same thing about when to go to bed, when to wake up, hour down, an hour before bed, all of these things that they're sampling through the week, we then get to the end of the week and help them with habit formation tools, neuroscience that helps go very incrementally, taking one or two things at a time to weave into a lifestyle because nobody can leave mountain trek, turn a life upside down and start over. It's about just tweaking just a one or two things across that balanced health tree that we just talked about. And then another new thing that we started this year as part of the reason not just stepped in as general managers, I'm stepping back so that two and a half days of the week, I'm available to coach guests when they leave. So we we haven't been able to do that in the past and give that ongoing support after they leave. We've been able to support the reset and people have come back annually um, for that. But it's really between the resets and we and reset is like coming back to your trainer and then picking up a new tip to go home and work on. But getting having someone in your court as an accountability buddy or an obstacle buster, um, somebody to work through some of the challenges of weaving work-life balance into home when you get home is something that we are really feeling strongly is going to be supportive to our community. Wonder if there's anybody that has any questions. Yeah, there's a few overlapping questions in the chat I want to cover. Um, one is talking about our typical guest. Could you elaborate a little bit on what brings people to Mountain Trek and, and who they are? Our, um, well, our typical guests, we have a, a demographic about 70% women, 30% men, although there's some weeks where that changes and we have more men. Um, we have about um, 60 to 70% of our guests come from the United States. And then we have the other, you know, 20 to 30% are Canadian and then international people as well coming also. Um, and we're seeing a shift, Alex, because, you know, 10, 15 years ago, the majority of our guests were, were very, you know, sort of professional, hot working, um, uh, you know, high <laughs> managers of businesses, CEOs, yes, exactly. Yeah. High output, high functioning, uh, you know, really striving. And now, of course, we're seeing this shift and many of them are starting to retire or are retired. Um, and that's not everybody. I mean, you know, last week we, we, we had a woman in her 20s and another woman now in this week in her 30s. And so it, it's a it's a range of demographics. And that's what we said, what I mentioned before about being able to attend to multiple needs. Um, and fitness levels. So um, do you want to add to that? No, I think that's good. I mean, we have an average around 25 to 30% every week are return guests. So they're coming for that second or third or fourth or fifth reset. Um, and then the rest are new and most are traveling solo. So most of our rooms are set up for solo. And um, we usually take a maximum of two couples a week. So it has a sense of being open, everybody's are all sort of perfect strangers to end up creating new relationships of support with each other. And the, the main reasoning for coming, I, I was looking at the chat, did you go over that? It's, it's mixed because some people are coming for a hiking vacation. And then they think, oh, yeah, I could go without wine or coffee for a week. And that might be a good little substance elimination for me and go along with that. Others are coming, like Katja said, because they haven't been to a gym in 10 or 20 years, and they realize that their, their body composition hasn't been going the way they wanted, and they need that kickstart, and they need a supportive way to do that. And then some are coming trend-wise from a weight loss program that we started in 2000 to be more of a holistic health reset. More and more people are coming to digitally detox, so take a break from the fixation that we, the compulsive compulsivity of these devices and they're coming for sleep 
and they're coming for hormonal balance because many of our our 60 to 70 percent of the women are perimenopause or menopausal and they're realizing that hormones is a big part of what's affecting their life um and that's so all of those things are weaving in together i would say 20 years ago it was all about fitness and weight loss now even though everybody loves to feel more fit and find uh lose some extra stored calories out of their body those aren't the drivers that people pay the money to come for and some people as well feel like they know that they need to create a shift in their diet mm -hmm. um but they don't know where to start mm -hmm. and so they come to sort of get a, a guideline and say okay what you show me what i could eat for a week and most people end up well pretty much everyone goes i can't believe i wasn't hungry all week um, and I was eating all these amazing foods and I wasn't missing anything. Um, so, and so that, and then they have, you know, a session with nutrition, with our nutritionist, Jen, who's absolutely lovely. And they get to learn even more about food and ask questions and that kind of thing. So there's also that component as absolutely. well. Absolutely. So I think it's multifaceted. And mindfulness now has become more and more mainstream for everybody to not think it's all woo woo. And so we weave that into everything from how we chew our food to how we notice our breath or our posture on the trail to um, ergonomics and in the gym, all of it is requiring more and more mindfulness and those tools that are woven in either through journaling or meditation classes or mindfulness classes through the week end up being what helps people notice change as they go home to initiate one or two new actions into a habit. So there's more desire for that as well. People are realizing their anxious thoughts are taking too much energy for them. So they're looking for some way to some tools to work with that. This might dovetail into that, but there's a lot here. I mean, this is a very complex program, I think, as our own health is complex. Um, I often get a lot of inquiries as to whether or not guests could stay for just three days. And we don't permit that. We have a seven-day program. Why don't we offer a three-day program? Is it too complex to make progress in three days? Yes, that remember that arc of the week in the first three days are kind of a little bit difficult for people as everything's getting recalibrated as they're letting go of substances and behaviors and and then getting used to getting fed six small meals across a day and having to uh, put out almost like an Olympic athlete in training. If you just came for two or three days, you would be leaving not too happy, not too comfortable. You'd be in the middle of sort of the detox aspect before things start to balance and then you pick your metabolism back up. So if a guest wants a healthy vacation on the weekend, there's other places. Definitely. Want a foundational shift, then Mountain Trek is the right place. Yeah. And again, on the other side of it, we don't take anybody more than two weeks. Again, science-based wise, we're mimicking with our caloric restriction and portions of six feedings across the day, basically what the body has survived through when it had to migrate. After two weeks, science shows that it'll go back into famine like we do when we diet. And that is not good for hormonal balance. So the two week is the maximum that the body can have this sort of constriction to caloric intake and rely on stored calories to augment and put out as much energy as it does. And then after that, it has to take in more calories. It has to reduce the amount of activity to be more balanced. I think Katya is gonna have to run here in a minute to go teach a lecture. Are there any other questions? Teaching a fitness class. But oh, I've got, I've got wow. five more minutes. I've got my, actually my hey. son downstairs setting it up so I can stay for five more. Okay. Thank um, you. Does anyone, anyone have a fitness related question for Katya? Feel free to just speak up at this point. You can put it in the chat as well. I'm monitoring that. I do see one other question about the air quality and smoke. How is it in the, the Nelson region? 
totally fine right now. So it depends on on the winds, of course, the prevailing winds. That we all, as you probably many of you know, if you're Canadian, the whole north of Canada is unfortunately on fire right now, um, and this is a problem that is going to is a part of reality that we all have to face. But right now, there's no smoke in the air. Um, we just had a little bit of fresh rain today, and um, yeah, we're, it's very fortunate right now. It's beautiful. I like mm -hmm. the, there's flowers all through the forest right now. It's been just a spectacular spring. Amazing butterflies and birds everywhere as you're hiking, and and then all the snow melt is just coursing down all of the waterways from little brooks to giant rivers, just thrashing their way down, and it's so inv invigorating. There's so much. Um, ions in the air as we're hiking. It's really gorgeous. Great. Any last questions? Uh, otherwise, we'll let Kirk and Katya get back to it. Did you say there are ions in the air? Yeah, you know, when you go over water that's in motion, it releases negative ions and it's kind of bathes the body, it goes into our lungs and it's kind of uplifting. It's a different kind of sense of air quality than in a high desert plateau, which would be more positive ion. Um, there's one last question that might be a good one to end on, Kirk, and then I think we'll sign off after that. And it's uh, talking about 10,000 steps. And I I'd love to get your take on that because I, I know we look at it not necessarily just as the physical steps that you take. What are the, the big picture takeaways with that 10,000 steps? What can we leave everyone with as a, a take home to think about when they read 10,000 steps? Well, I'll just start with why and then Katja can add to how that fits in with functional fitness. But the American and Canadian Medical Association adopted that number all the way back in 2000. And the purpose was primarily to lower inflammation. Because when we sit as much as we do and we only wiggle our fingers, we are not pumping blood through our cleaning organs, our kidneys and liver. And so we accumulate waste products by the amount of sitting that we're doing either at work or to get to work or to cope with work. And so that sedentarism was a big part of creating increased inflammation along with hormonal imbalance that really is the root of 90% of all of the illnesses of our epoch. Arthritis, dementia, one third of the cancers, type two diabetes, all of it is inflammation based, chronic inflammation. So that 10,000 steps was just to get people to move up blood through their body. But how it fits to functional fitness country, maybe you could say something. Yeah, I, I would add that, um, you know, anytime that anyone is starting a health reset, um, you want to start where you're at. And so, you know, if, if you're a high level athlete, maybe you're just creating small tweaks in your already existing program. But if you are someone that is brand new to fitness um, and doing a health reset, 10,000 steps is just a really great solid goal for just for the first piece. So we may work with someone where you, you would say, okay, let's, let's just start there. Even if we don't do strength training and we don't have, you know, all of the big goals in place, let's, let's meet you where most of us have access to that. Most of us can, you know, wherever we are, we have access to 10,000 steps a day, whether it's adding that we're parking farther away, whether we're going up on the stairs instead of taking the elevator, whether after lunch, instead of sitting and scrolling through our phone, we're adding an after lunch walk. Um, same thing after dinner, rather than sitting down and watching Netflix, maybe you and your partner are taking the dog for a walk. So we're that 10,000 steps is just a really amazing entry level for fitness that anyone can do. And the, the, the 
this research really supports it. It's super solid. Um, and, and to be fair, you know, 8,000, 10,000, I, I don't think it needs to be exactly 10,000. I think we can fixate a little bit on that. I think if we're in that neighborhood, um, for some people, that's that's a lot of movement compared to what they're used to doing. So that's a great, that's a great place to start. Um, and, and the research says that if even you were able to get that three to four times a week, you reduce your health, any sort of health risk by a really, really large amount. Um, and so it's a great, it's a great starting place for all of us to be. And it's a great daily goal. I mean, even if you have a solid fitness routine, um, it, it, I, I would highly recommend that it's, and it's also a bit of a secret fat loss weapon um, because there's, you know, people often think about fat loss as just being diet. And if you can increase your daily movement, um, it's a little bit of a back pocket trick. And so, uh, you, you know, that's the right thing. You can learn about all those kinds of things when you come to Mountain Trek, those little tricks. And that, that's what I personally have found the most value in being a part of this team and also joining as a guest once a year is we are told so many things by media and magazines and you, you beat it into your head. I have to do 10,000 steps. I have to do 10,000. Don't actually comprehend the fundamentals behind that and to know and to, to see it that movement is what reduces inflammation. Movement is why our, our leaders are distilling it to 10,000 steps. But it's not just a step. Every movement counts. And if you're constantly moving your body, you're constantly moving your blood, which is constantly reducing your inflammation, which is constantly reducing your risk for all of those diseases that Kirk was mentioning. So those insights, you get to live them while you're at the retreat and you get to see the results of living them in the moment. But you also take those pieces of knowledge home and they affect a host of decisions when you're at home without even realizing I have personally shifted my exercise from a very stereotypical late 20s, early 30s, push, pull-ups, uh, CrossFit, big muscles, to now understanding that for the longevity aspect of my life, movement, walking, uh, walking up hills, that's better for me. It fits into my lifestyle, reduces my stress, reduces my cortisol level while increasing my movement, therefore reducing my inflammation. So these insights, I think, are also what you, you garner at Mountain Trek. And it's hard to put those into our marketing materials. But that's something I personally value about attending every year. I just want to mention too, Alex, that um, we have a white paper. We hired two university press professors from the University of Birmingham, Alabama. Bye, everybody. Bye, Kancha. Bye, Kancha. To go through the program. And then take all of our formulas for health and double and triple research to make sure that what we're offering isn't fad, what we offer is science-based. We could have two to three surgeons a week at Mountain Trek. So we don't just do avocado toast because it's all sexy when, one year. We, we do things that are very stable. If anything, they're kind of anchored on an anthropological overview that how humans lived for the majority of our time as homo sapiens. And so we're not just bouncing around with any new diet or any new activity. We're looking at what is right for all of the systems to integrate properly. And so we do intermittent fasting and we always have right from the year 2000, but it's only for 12 hours and it's for the purpose of lowering inflammation. It's not for weight loss. It's for the process of autophagy which is cellular inflammation lowering. So we're very science-based that way. Thank you, Kirk. And we just lost Katya, but I want to thank her for her time. Um, I think this is a good time to sign off. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, if you enjoyed this, let us know. We might host a few more of these. They'll probably be a little bit more topic-specific than, than just this general Q&A. As Kirk mentioned, as he moves into more of his program director role and less of his general manager role, he's focused on giving his knowledge to our community. Uh, we aren't just a one-week program. We are a community. And our mission is to help everyone here on our newsletters who come to Mountain Trek to lead a healthier life, not just in the seven days or 14 days that they're with us, but at home too. So Absolutely. 
please let us know if you enjoyed this. We'll try to host more maybe once a month. Um, but this is part of our effort to transfer Kirk's vast amount of knowledge to all of you so you can live a happier and healthier life. Thank you all. Thanks for attending and all the best to you. Best in health and happiness. Thank you. Bye, right, everyone. Sign off. Alex, there's a whole bunch of chats, like 32, I don't know, are they questions, but is there any way to get that information back to people? We answered pretty much every question. Okay, great. From a Chris that we didn't get to about uh, are our participants new to exercise, but I, I think we covered mm. much everything else. Um, thank you, Kirk. Really appreciate it. I think I'll just I'll end the meeting now and okay. everyone have a wonderful night. Thanks a lot, Alex. Take care, everybody.